Thank you, Christian. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, this is not the second presentation from Bosch. It's uh, the second pr presentation from Stuttgart. Um, yeah, my name is Andreas Bosch, Enterprise Architect at McKesson Europe. Um, and uh, yeah, we found that uh, GDPR and Lean IX is, uh, is a business IT symbiosis. What that means, we will, we will clarify it during the presentation. Um, just grab that one. Um, what are we uh, talking today uh, during that presentation? I would like to give you a little bit of an introduction of McKesson. Um, then a brief GDPR recap for those of you that might have forgotten um, <laughs> during their travel to here uh, what GDPR is about. And um, then how we solved uh, our GDPR approach in, in McKesson Europe. Um, a couple of opportunities and challenges. Yes, there are plenty of challenges out there. Uh, I would like to focus on those uh, linked to Lean IX and what we found with Lean IX. Um, and then a summary, a couple of do's and, and don'ts that I would like to, to give you um, for your for your day-to-day -day, uh, work and, and further project, GDPR project. Um, within the next days. Um, McKesson Europe, uh, at a glance, uh, formerly we were, we were known as Silesio HE. Um, yeah, with a, with a long history, um, we are a leading wholesale and retail company in healthcare, in the healthcare sector. Uh, we offer logistics and, and services um, to two million customers uh, every day in 13 countries across Europe. Um, the, the facts are here on the screen. Uh, I think you can, you can read that on your own. Uh, a little bit of insights in our IT landscape. We, have, we run about 900 applications um, that we have documented in, in Linux. We have about 8,000 IT components documented. Um, and we have a team in IT, about 550, 600 employees. Um, we are live with Lean IX since March 17, so uh, three quarters of a year about, around about. Um, and, and we're really, really happy with it uh, because it, it helps us not only in GDPR, in, in many uh, use cases and, and, and many projects it supports. Um, at the moment, Yesterday, we had about 330 active users in the system, so users that um, once uh, or multiple times uh, signed in. And we have about 250 uh, users that requested on their own write permissions to the application. Um, so they need to, every user needs to get active uh, on his own and, and raise a service request to get write permissions in the tool. But every employee in the company, so uh, not 39,000 employees, but 17,000 employees have an Active Directory account, they can sign in and, and read the repository. Um, the difference with the employees comes from, uh, from uh, many people work in, in retail pharmacies and they don't have a computer account at all. Um, the majority stakeholder of uh, McKesson Europe is the McKesson Corporation in, based in San Francisco. And um, McKesson Corporation is ranked number five in the Fortune 500. So that might give you an understanding uh, how big uh, McKesson itself is. So we're nearly the size in revenue, we're nearly the size of Apple um, or uh, ExxonMobil. Um, yeah, that is, that is the company size a little bit. Uh, 200 billion combined revenues uh, in, in the last uh, fiscal year and delivering one third of, uh, of the prescription medicines in, in North America. Um, and uh, when, you, when you see the, um, the business sectors that, or the core segments that we are uh, active in, uh, so healthcare, uh, you understand that we need to take uh, GDPR really, really serious, and why it is so important to uh, to us that we can demonstrate 
uh, compliance. Not only being compliant, we need to demonstrate compliance uh, by May uh, 25th next year. Um, yeah, GDPR recap. Uh, very brief. Uh, it's focused on PII. Um, that is sometimes forgotten by, by my application owners. Uh, they try to document everything. Uh, I say, no, we're going to focus on, GDP, on PII. Uh, personal, person identifiable uh, information. Um, we focus on, on um, the mentioned um, categories and the special uh, data categories like uh, healthcare, uh, data, uh, biometric data, genetic data. Um, it protects all EU residents worldwide, so it affects all, not only McKesson Europe, it also affects uh, McKesson Corporation in the US, as they are dealing in some areas with customers in, in the EU. Um, and uh, it gives a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, subject rights to, um, to each of us. So, um, and this is a big opportunity, um, or we see it as an opportunity um, for us um, to demonstrate uh, transparency in our processes, what we do with customer data, and uh, that we can, we can build trust into our partner relationship with customers, with uh, suppliers, or, um, or even with employees, because employee data is as well protected via GDPR. Um, the penalties violations are, are obvious, and when you remember the numbers from, from the slide before, 200 billion revenue um, for the last fiscal, uh, if we apply 2% for a, for a minor, uh, a minor uh, weakness in the, in the uh, compliancy, uh, that would be 4 billion uh, euros roundabout, or US dollar. Um, yeah, so the question really is how to avoid the next data protection gate after having the diesel gate and, uh, yeah. Um, so how do we do that? Um, that's, that's really the challenge here. Um, <coughs> First of all, you need to make a decision on, on your um, documentation approach that you need to do. Um, option A is you start business driven, uh, business process driven, sorry, business process driven. Um, by that, you need a, a full process documentation um, repository, inventory, whatever you're going to call it. Uh, and then from there, you can, you can link your data objects. But if you want to link data objects to your processes, you can't just start at level one or level two processes. You need to go down to level four processes at minimum. Uh, otherwise, it would not make sense or it, you won't be able to, to link the data objects. Then from there, you can link the applications, uh, um, involved providers and IT components to get all the data documented. Um, the option B is that you start with your IT systems or applications. And um, this starts with a full application inventory. So you need to have at least name and, and uh, a bit of description, life cycle, an application responsible. And from there, um, you start linking your data objects, your um, IT components, your providers that you, that you use in, uh, in, the, uh, in the run operations of your, of your applications. Um, I would have two questions to the audience here in the room. Um, and you probably could answer that uh, very quickly. Um, when you have to choose option A or B, how well documented would you say is your, is your process landscape or application landscape? And uh, please raise your hand at the, at the at the level. So, would you say your your landscape level f uh, process landscape level four processes is a hundred percent? Who would who could say that? Raise your hand. Nobody. Okay. Uh, up to eighty percent. Up to sixty. Okay. Very good. Up to forty. Okay. And uh, up to twenty. <laughs> okay. Thank you. 
if we, if we do the same exercise now for the application landscape, 100% completeness of your IT landscape, very good, brave ones, okay, <laughs> excellent, okay, N 99 maybe, <laughs> okay, up, up, to, um, up to 80. Oh, we had nobody in the 80 here, so yeah, we already get uh, the, the expected picture. Uh, it was the same with us. Uh, we skipped the rest of the of the exercise. Um, yeah, we also don't have a full process landscape for our 13 countries, 13 independent business units that run independently their IT solutions. Um, we we only have an application landscape that is that is starting to grow in Lean IX. Uh, when we when we as enterprise architects joined. Um, the GDPR project. Um, and so we decided that we go for the application um, approach. So yeah, now we're going to start uh, with, the, with the application, as I mentioned. Uh, we have a name, we have a description, we have a life cycle. The application is active um, or is phasing out or is ramping up. Um, and we have a replication responsible. Um, a couple of attributes: is it on-premise? Is it SaaS hosted? Um, a couple of texts applied to to the application fact sheet. And from there, we start to identify the user groups. Um, the user groups in our repository are the legal entities. Um, our business unit in UK, in France, in Portugal, Italy, and so on and so on. Um, and uh, with the on the on the edge between the uh, user group and the application, we can identify um, the data controller, uh, the joint data controller with a little bit of a workaround, uh, and the user. Um, we and this maybe I need to to add here to this uh, chart. Uh, we didn't do any any customizing by Lean IX, so that was all. Uh, um, out of the box functionality um, that we use here in in our approach. Um, yeah, so that is the that is the approach for or that is the the user group, and then um, most important uh, of all, uh, we can link to the data object. Um, the data objects are tagged, um, being PII data objects or special categories, so you can filter later on and, and separate it from the. Uh, Non-GDPR data objects, um, yeah. And on the edge, you can describe in in a free text field. You can describe the purpose. Why do we use this data in this application? Uh, why do we collect it there? Um, and um, and the legal basis, you can describe as well. Then we need to understand and know the IT components um, that are used. Um, to support or to build this application. So which hardware, software, and services do we use? The hardware is important because we need to know where the data is stored and where it is uh, computed. Um, and the services is important because uh, service providers often um, have some kind of access to the data. Um, that it could be an encrypted database, but for disaster recovery, especially the recovery, uh, they need to have access to the raw data somehow via a key, a decryption, private decryption key. Um, and um, therefore, we need to understand and know who are the service providers um, used to, used to uh, process the data. Um, and linked to the services, then, we have the providers. Uh, and the providers, um, yeah, is the data processor who is operating um, that, and we have a location field uh, on the provider, um, or a location link, is it a link, or is it a field? Um, and um, so we can, we can define where is that provider operating from, is it from the, within the EU, is it from outside um, the, the EU, is it from the US, is it from Asia? So we can, we can later on filter on that. 
and we have a vendor manager um, being responsible for that um, for that provider. So we know uh, whom to ask within the company if we if we need to figure out uh, do we have a data processing agreement with that provider, and um, who can who can maintain that this tech on the provider level. Um, then, um, yeah, we're exchanging data as well um, with, uh, between the applications, with third parties. And so we have a couple of interfaces. Um, yeah, and in the interface, in the description field, we can describe the uh, purpose of the transfer. Um, we have uh, an interface type tag, um, whether it is a technical interface, well, yeah, sub PI, WebSphere, whatever. So data is, or REST API, data is delivered from A to B, application A to B, or whether it's a procedural uh, interface. For example, um, there is a job ticket, a job ticket portal, and um, employees um, applying to the, to the job ticket portal uh, need to submit their data on the Deutsche Bahn website. So the company is forcing employees to submit data to Deutsche Bahn. And then Deutsche Bahn submits. So that is, that is, that is all clear. But then Deutsche Bahn submits the data back to our HR department to double check whether this person is really an employee here. And HR confirms. That's a procedural interface via some email or call or whatever uh, triggering. Uh, and that needs to be described and documented. Um, or, um, for example, another one we found is um, if we have expats, um, the company is uh, supporting um, the expat with their tax declaration in the, in the foreign country. And that is done by Ernst & Young in our case. So um, the tax um, data of the employee is delivered to Ernst & Young. That's a procedural thingy. Um, you give all your paperwork uh, to Ernst & Young. Um, it's not. It's nothing that you that you doc uh, that you build in in sub PI, but you need to document it somehow. Um, yeah, and um, that is that is uh, that is what we what we do with the with the interface. And uh, of course, you can link the interface then. Uh, as well to the data objects so that you understand which data objects are transferred here uh, in in more detail. Um, yeah, and GDPR requires a requires a uh, annual checkup of all your documentation, so you need to apply quality seals to your to your uh, model. At the moment. Uh, we go only for the quality seal at the application. Um, so we looked at the application as the central piece. Here is, is quality sealed. Um, we will enable the quality seal as well for the provider and the IT uh, for the provider and the interface. Um, the IT component we have an interface to our CMDB, so we can uh, we can somehow uh, assume. The data in the in the CMDB is correct if it's used um, here, and uh, and we can we can assume the quality seal being being correctly. That is that is our approach here. Um, maybe you have questions later on uh, on that chart, so we can we can come back to that. Um, what challenges and opportunities have we seen during during this? Uh, exercise. <clears throat> um, first one was the IT component and location. <laughs> and location text is, is something uh, rather new one. Um, yeah, only only single location is possible on the IT component. So if you have a database service, 24 by 7, that is that has a follow the sun principle. And it's located in Malaysia and in Canada and Hungary. Um, we have the issue uh, mm. that we can't just use one uh, fact sheet for that. Therefore, we need to create a hierarchy 
that we have a global 24 by 7 database fact sheet, and then we have on level two uh, individual ones for the for the uh, for the teams. Um, that brings a couple of further issues in the reporting later on with it. <laughs> or challenges, <laughs> opportunities. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we can complete the documentation by that, um, using, using this, this topic. Um, and, um, and then the, the location itself is, is a reference in, in Google Maps with the longitude and latitude and the address and uh, country uh, and, and the city, postal code, etc. Um, but you can't call it or open it like a fact sheet and add text to it to, for filtering. For example, within EU and without EU, uh, outside EU or in the US uh, or within an evil country, whatever, North Korea. Um, <laughs> So you, c you can't use tax here and, and a couple of other things. Um, so that is something that, that we haven't sorted out um, how to, how to solve, that, solve that without any customizing. Um, this one, the multi-fact sheet type survey, uh, sounds more difficult. That was our first idea when we heard about GDPR. Oh, that's a survey. Brilliant. Let's do it. And uh, we had no, that was in, in February, even before our go live. And uh, we talked to, we had no experience with surveys at that time. And we talked to Lena X and they built um, the, the, full, um, the full questionnaire within Lena X as a survey. Um, but we identified um, it can only be linked to the application. So you can't link the first five questions to the application, the next 10 questions to the user group, and the next 20 questions to the IT components. You can only link one survey to one fact sheet. Um, this is something that might improve in the future in Linux, hopefully. <laughs> we discussed. <laughs> um, yeah, but so therefore we found it's, it's not an approach to solve GDPR. Uh, we decided to train the users using the user interface of Linux because it's quite simple to use. Uh, and it works, yes. Um, and as I said, no, I didn't mention, uh, our GDPR uh, questionnaire uh, has about 200 questions um, in, in full, full blown. What we've seen here is about 30 or 40 yeah, 40, 40 fields in Lena X. So 150, 160 um, questions are still left. Um, and if we need to, in the end, for an external auditor, need to build a, a, a common or uh, comprehensive documentation about our procedures, we need to build a reporting um, across Linux and that external data source. So we need to combine both data sources. And at the moment, um, I haven't seen that in, in, in uh, reports within Linux. Um, probably we're going to see something later on uh, from Patrick. Um, so what we what we decided for is uh, we go for Microsoft Power BI and uh, Power Query, which is a an, an, uh, cost-free um, add-on for Microsoft Excel, and you can instantly access uh, the the data in uh, in Linux uh, and and at any other data source. Uh, whether it's a database or whether it's Excel or Access or SharePoint, whatever you have, you can you can link both data together. If you have a link, a primary key, the the fact sheet ID or the application name, whatever you you're gonna use. <coughs> and um, as an outlook uh, opportunity for us, uh, we. Uh, we are looking into into a dedicated um, 
GRC solution, GDPR solution, um, because we found many of the questions that we that we have during during this exercise GDPR are already answered for other questionnaires for cybersecurity, um, for for other um, regulations, um, and uh, GRC suites offer. Um, a capability um, that you can reuse already answered uh, questions uh, in the same in the same um, or in another questionnaire, and you don't need to answer as an application owner. You don't need to answer the the same application uh, the same question twice. Um, and then, w what would be key then for us? Um, another challenge uh, is the seamless integration of that GRC suite with Linux via GraphQL. And uh, I heard that it's going to be more simple in the future because you're building up capabilities to support us with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, we're working at the moment on our first uh, GraphQL interface um, that is running automatically. And as soon as we've done that and have that up and running, we're going to extend that with, an, with the next interfaces to other tools. Um, because for us, Lean IX is the central IT inventory. Um, it's the truth for applications, for IT components, um, services, and software, um, and and all the other sources like CMDB or uh, software asset management. Um, they are they are having more details, um, but the Linux inventory is the one that brings everything together. Summary. A um, couple of do's. Um, yeah, support your GDPR uh, project as early and as much as possible. This is, this is what I learned. Um, we uh, couldn't do the support during uh, when they reached out to us in November uh, last year, uh, because we were busy with with other topics as enterprise architects, so we, we handed over to IT governance, and um, they run into the SharePoint direction, and they run into a dead end. And uh, uh, in March, we all met together, and uh, we we decided, yeah, let's go for for Linux uh, as we have it ready now. Um, do over communicate with your application owners to generate awareness. So meet them as much as possible. Um, tell them about one weakness is the risk of 4% of your revenue. And by that, we identified Shadow IT. <laughs> you can't imagine. Because nobody wanted to be the guilty guy. You, you. Because of you, we lost 4 billion. <laughs> Yeah, um, so yeah, raise the awareness with the people. Uh, uh, tell them what permissions customers get or what rights they get and what questions they will be faced um, during next year from customers when the first customer comes and says, um, please make transparent what data you have of me. And when did I give consent to send me that email newsletter, X? and uh, raise them with exactly those questions as soon as possible, as often as possible, um, to, make, to make them aware of, of GDPR. You, ha you are the people, as enterprise architects, you are the, the guys in the company that have access to the application owners. Um, so reach out to them. Um, link uh, link uh, the annual GDPR reviews with your Linux repository so you get accurate data at least once a year. In the past, we, before Linux, we had an inventory that was three years old. Nobody updated. So now we introduced um, the quality seal on the application. We have the, um, we have the GDPR reviews. Um, the, the first one is scheduled for May next year. Um, so, as soon as we will finish our project, we will directly start with a review. Um, link it to your Linux repository, and um, you will get 
almost perfect data in your repository to later on then build strategies and roadmaps and whatever you, you need as an enterprise architect for your original job, building roadmaps and strategies and bring the business forward. Um, apply visibilities and develop KPIs and, and apply visibilities um, on KPIs to, to measure uh, GDPR documentation completeness. Uh, we did that in, in, in our uh, company that we, that we develop a completeness KPI. So which fields need to be filled? Are they filled? Is the quality seal, perfect, thank you, is the quality seal uh, set? Uh, and uh, this measures per business unit, per IT head, um, a completeness and make that KPI transparent. Make a comparison dashboard between them on a high level and say, UK, France, Germany, Norway, Austria, um, three of you are above 80% and the others are not. Uh, I don't tell you which ones are, yeah, but they can see it and on their chart on a on a day to day uh, on day to day updates and make that transparent and there will be a competition between them. You don't need to force them to do something. It's just building the competition between them. A couple of don'ts. Uh, it's not a good idea to underestimate the effort um, to document the, the applications and, and the GDPR requirements. Um, and don't expect your landscape being complete. There's always a new application. There's a Twitter channel coming around or there is a WhatsApp use case, <laughs> uh, another Dropbox, <laughs> um, and uh, there is another portal from, from a car rental company um, that you use and where you submit your employee data. Um, there is always another portal showing up that somebody without IT just spun up. And uh, another recommendation, a recommendation and um, this uh, supports um, the lean in Lean IX. Keep your Lean IX lean. Don't overload it. Um, there is the possibility of customizing, and you can customize the, the 200 questions into your fact sheets. Uh, you would be able to do that, uh, <laughs> I think. Um, but you won't use these data again until the review cycle uh, of, your, of your GDPR project comes up again. So if you have it in here, um, you will just overload your, your Lean IX and you won't find anything again. So keep it lean in Lean IX. Um, bring the data that supports you, your use cases as enterprise architects or that supports other projects like uh, data center moves uh, that where, you, where you need to support uh, or software, um, uh, software migration roadmaps. Uh, bring those data in here in Linux and push the other topics out. One minute? One minute. Uh, so, yeah, last sentence here. Um, what is the symbiosis? Um, I think it became clear. Um, the, the symbiosis is we have a business, we have a legal driven project, and we have enterprise architects in IT um, that have a demand for a completeness of an inventory. And we have a a starting point for an inventory that can feed into structuring the GDPR documentation project. That is the symbiosis that we that we found here in our company. Thank you very much. <laughs>